Hello, Year 8. Um, we're on Lesson 3. It's the Forces, Waves and Generating Electricity booklet. Now, we're going to have a look at gravity today, the force of gravity. To work out gravity on Earth, you need to take two measurements from an object, its mass and its weight force. Mass is in kilograms. We've done that all the time. If ever you go on your measuring scales, you get a mass reading. Now, my mass reading, this is Mr. Ruddy, is 70 kilograms. I've got my mass. Now, my mass is the number of particles, the amount of matter in my body. Whereas if I stand onto a Newton meter, it measures my weight force downwards. And when they measure that, it is 710 Newtons of weight force. So now what we do is we've written out the equation. Gravity is weight divided by mass. Number two, you always write down your workings. So your weight force 710 divided by my mass 70 and I get a value for gravity to two decimal places of 10.14 newtons of weight force for every single kilogram of my mass now in actual fact gravity on earth has been worked out much more accurately and precisely and it actually equals 9.81 newtons of weight force per kilogram so i was slightly out there what are the units of measuring force highlight the correct answer then circle each of the other units and state what they represent. For example, if I was to circle this one here, that's not for measuring force. Kilograms is for measuring a mass. I'm going to stop the video for a second. Let's see if you can't highlight the correct answer what units are measuring force and then circle all the others and tell me what they represent i wondered did you get the right answers of course newtons are used for measuring force joules that is the units for energy write that down centimeters cubed volume centimeters will be length or distance centimeters squared will be measuring an area of something like a piece of paper degree c is a measurement for temperature and meters per second speed here's a homework for you but do you know what why don't you have a go at this straight away and we'll go through the answers at the beginning of our next lesson, right? It's out of seven marks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Give it a go. Okay, we are going to have a look at the forces surrounding an object. What you need to do is draw um, an object that's got a front and a end or a, uh, a head and a tail, as it were. Um, on the ground so uh, and facing towards this flower here here's my drawing very quick ba -ba 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 -ba. -li 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 -li. facing towards the flower it is of course a happy snail there are four forces that surround a snail these two act as a pair. And these two also act 
as a pair of forces. The first two I've written in, we've got weight force downwards and we've got an, an equal normally but opposite um, lifting force or a reaction force. Can you write those two in? The horizontal forces, we've got our forward force. The force from the engine or thrust. Opposing the forward force, we'll have friction forces. For example, when the snail moves along, there will be friction between its little underbelly here and the ground. But also, it, we, it will be moving through air and it's going to hit air particles. So there'll be air resistance as well. Air resistance is a type of friction force. If it was a fish swimming through water, um, the major friction force would be water resistance. So label up those two pairs of forces. Now you're going to find out that forces can be balanced. They can be equal but opposite. When two forces acting on an object are equal in size but act in opposite directions, we call them balanced. If the forces on an object are balanced, or if there's no forces acting on them, so they're still balanced, one of two things can happen. A stationary object will stay still. For example, hanging objects. And you can see a seat here. The weight force, which is 85 Newtons, is a balanced by a tension force in the rope of an equal but in an opposite direction force. Let's have a look at this parked car. A parked car has a mass of 1,352 kilos and gravity on Earth is 10. If we want to work out its weight force, its weight force is this in this direction. Let's work out its weight force. Its mass multiplied by its gravity. They're the workings. The answer is 13,520. The units are Newtons. So 1,000, sorry, 13,520 Newtons downwards. If the car is parked, it's not moving, so the forces must be balanced. They're equal but opposite. So the weight force is balanced by the reaction force from the ground and the forces are balanced. They're equal but opposite. And if that's the case, the car stays still. Here's another example, weight lifting. There's a massive weight force of 5,000 Newtons downwards and this individual must be very strong, he's lifting up with an equal but opposite force. And the forces are balanced. Last example. A tug of war between two identical twins. They're both pulling with an equal but opposite force. What's gonna happen during this tug of war? Well, the little piece of rope here will stay absolutely still. The forces are balanced. Have a read through this example of floating on water. Once again, the forces are going to be equal but opposite. They're going to be balanced. We have seen in balanced forces, when two forces acting on an object are equal in size, but in opposite directions, we say that they're balanced. Now, so far, 
all of these objects have been still. However, you can have balanced forces and the moving object continues at the same speed and in the same direction. It is not speeding up and it is not slowing down. Let us have a look at this final example. Add in force arrows. Add in 46 newtons for the total friction. The total friction is designed to slow the bike down. That will be air resistance and friction between the tires and the road. And of course air resistance as she crashes through billions of air particles. And then she is pedaling forward with a force of 46 newtons. The overall force acting on the object is called the resultant force. If the, res if the forces are balanced, the resultant force is going to be one. Take away the other one, which equals zero newtons. The forces are balanced. That's the end of this lesson.